Hello everyone, it's Dr. C. This is my second video on Lewis structures. I recorded a part one, so you might want to go back and review that. Uh, but let's continue. We're going to draw some more Lewis structures, work some more examples, and let me just refresh your memories about the method that we're going to use to draw Lewis structures. So the first thing we're going to do is count the dots, count the valence electrons. Remember, it's valence electrons that are involved in bonding. We can easily do that by looking at the group number of the family the elements are in. We're going to make a pretty picture by putting the least electronegative element in the center. Now, electronegativity is easy to remember because fluorine is the most electronegative element. So it must increase across toward fluorine and increase up toward fluorine. What that means is that fluorine really wants to attract electrons to itself in a bond. So when it bonds to something else, it has a really strong attraction for electrons. That's what we mean by electronegativity. Fluorine is the most electronegative element. We're going to start out with single bonds. Just one line. That's a two electron bond. So we're going to connect with single bonds. We're going to satisfy the octet rule for the outer atoms first before we move to the central atom. We're going to do that by placing lone pairs of electrons on the outer atoms to complete the octets. Then we're going to move to the central atom. Okay? If we have any extra electrons to place, we're going to place them on the central atom as lone pairs. And we might, at times, have to exceed the octet rule for the central atom. That's okay if the central atom is in the third row of the table or below. That atom is large enough to accommodate more electrons. And we could also argue it has empty d orbitals as well that could be used. Okay? So if you're going to exceed anything in a Lewis structure, exceed on the central atom. Now in other structures, we might place all of our valence electrons, and the central atom might end up short of electrons. And in that case, we make a multiple or multiple bonds. All right, so there's a quick review. Let's do some examples. SO2, sulfur dioxide. Sulfur and oxygen are both in group 6 or group 16. That's 6 valence electrons, 6 for sulfur, 2 oxygens at 6 each, 18 valence electrons. Or, this is an electron pair model, so we can work with pairs of electrons. So, oxygen, if you look at a periodic, periodic table, is right next to fluorine. And so it is the second most electronegative element. So sulfur is less electronegative. We put that in the middle. We connect with single bonds. We then start with the outer atoms, placing lone pairs to complete the octets. Okay, and let's stop there and see where we are. Counting each oxygen, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. We've placed 8 pairs, 16 electrons. We have one more pair to place. The only place we can put it is on the central atom. So once the outer atoms are satisfied, we move to the central atom. We have now placed all 18 electrons. Are we done? No, not quite, right? Because... The sulfur, the central atom, is, has not satisfied the octet rule. We only have two single bonds. That's four electrons and that lone pair. Right now, we only have six electrons on that central atom. What do we do? Look up at rule six. If the central atom is short, make a multiple bond. So let's take a lone pair from the oxygen on the left. Make a double bond. How's that? Looks pretty good, right? If we count... Oxygen on the left, two, four, six, eight, two lone pairs, two bonding pairs. The sulfur, two, four, six, eight. That one has three bonding pairs and a lone pair. And the oxygen on the right, one bonding pair, three lone pairs, total of eight. Okay, so that looks like a good Lewis structure. Now you might be thinking, well, why didn't you take the lone pair from the oxygen on the right? And it turns out I could do that. And so I could come up with another Lewis structure where we put the double bond on the right and the single bond on the left. Let 
Okay, which one's right? You know what? Actually, neither by itself. Okay. Yes, we've satisfied the rules for drawing a Lewis structure. All the octets are satisfied. We've placed the less electronegative element in the center. But the real structure of the molecule is an average of these two. And we show that they are averaged by putting a double-headed arrow between those two structures. And these two structures are called resonance structures. I have students um, every once in a while call these renaissance structures and it always kind of cracks me up. And then the average of these two, okay, so in our mind when we average those two together, we call that average a resonance hybrid. All right. So how do we know that the real structure is an average of these two? Well, we look at bond lengths. And if you look at experimental data, the sulfur-oxygen bond lengths are equivalent. Okay, so what we notice in this molecule is there's two sulfur-oxygen bonds. And the bond length data tells us that those two bonds are equal in length. Well, that's not the case if we had one single bond and one double bond as we've drawn in our structure. A double bond is shorter and stronger than a single bond. Okay, so a double bond is stronger and shorter than a single bond. So if this were the correct structure that I've circled on the right, we would see that difference in experimental data. Experimental data, the bond lengths are equal, and they're intermediate in length between a typical sulfur-oxygen single bond and double bond. So that tells us that the real structure is an average of those two. All right, so the main conclusion from all this is the Lewis model is a, is a simple bonding model. It works amazingly well for how simple it is. The problem is there are some things it um, has some trouble with. And this is one of those cases. These two electrons that I've now shown on the left and then over on the right side of the structure, we call those delocalized electrons. Those two electrons are moving throughout the structure of that molecule. And the Lewis model does not account well for delocalized electrons. Okay, it's a localized electron model. And so that's why the Lewis model has a little difficulty here. And we make up by, for that by drawing, in this case, two resonance structures. Okay, I hope that makes sense. That's SO2. Let's try another one. Let's go to NO3 minus. So this is the nitrate ion. Let's draw the Lewis structure for that. Nitrogens in group 5 are group 15, that's 5 valence electrons, 3 oxygens each with 6. What do you think we do with that negative 1 charge? Yeah, that negative 1 charge would indicate we have an extra electron, so let's add 1 in. And what does that take us to? 24 electrons or 12 pairs. All right. Oxygen, again, is the second most electronegative element. Nitrogen to the left of oxygen will be less electronegative, so we're going to put that in the center. Make a pretty picture. Connect the three oxygens with single bonds. Start with the outer atoms first. Complete the octets with lone pairs. Okay, and how's that? Where are we at now? Let's see. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. I've placed 12 pairs, 24 electrons. Are we done? No, nope, not quite. The nitrogen is short of two electrons. It only has six electrons around it. If you've placed all the electrons and the central atom ends up short, what do you do? Multiple bond. Start with the leftmost oxygen. Make a double bond. That looks better. If you count now, all the octets are satisfied. 
Now, this is a charged species, and let me scroll back up, and the last thing that I have written here, if a substance is an ion, put brackets around the molecule and indicate the electrical charge of the species in the upper right corner outside the bracket. So let's do that. Okay, now we'll look in a, in a video coming up shortly on formal charges. We'll look at another way we could represent the, char the charge on that um, ion. But for now, we're just going to say it's minus 1 overall. We're going to put that outside those square brackets. All right, I know you're thinking ahead and you're saying, but wait a minute. I could have taken the lone pairs from the bottommost oxygen or the oxygen on the right. And if you're thinking correctly, you're saying, oh, this one must have resonance structures too, and you're correct. We could draw actually two more resonance structures. Okay, making the double bond on the bottom oxygen. Okay, negative one charge, indicate that. Now we can put the double bond on the right. Oh, that was not what I wanted to do. And it won't let me get rid of my, my double bond there. All right, let me try this again. Let's draw it up here. Double bond on the right. Technology is fun sometimes. The old version of Microsoft OneNote used to have an eraser, and it kind of disappeared. And it'd be nice to have that back again. All right, so there we go. Sorry for the mess there. Three resonance structures. And so, again, just to emphasize, this ion doesn't have two single bonds and a double bond. It really has an average of those three structures where the, all the bonds are equivalent and the average is intermediate between a single and a double bond. Probably about a bond and a third if you average those. Okay? So again, when we have these resonance structures, not one of them by itself is technically correct. The real structure is an average of those three. And these two electrons that I've circled here, those are what we actually call delocalized electrons. Delocalized electrons. So those two electrons are not localized on between this nitrogen and oxygen, or localized there, or localized on that side of the molecule. They're moving throughout the entire structure. And we'll talk more about delocalized electrons later. All right? Okay, resonance structures. The average of those three structures together would be called a resonance hybrid. All right, more examples. SF6, sulfurs in group 6, group 16, 6 fluorines, fluorine is in group 7 or group 17, and I think that adds up to 48 electrons or 24 pairs. What goes in the center? Yeah, fluorine's the most electronegative, so that's not going to go in the center. Must be sulfur. Okay, arrange those fluorines as you see fit around the sulfur. All right, now complete the octets. Lots of dots to draw on this one, 48 electrons to place. Almost there. All right. So this is why I like working in pairs. 24 pairs is still a lot, but if we count in pairs, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. We've placed all the electrons. So all 48 electrons, 24 pairs have been placed. The sulfur, the central atom, does exceed the octet rule to make six single bonds. It does have to exceed. It's going to have 12 electrons. Sulfur is far enough down in the periodic table that it can exceed the octet rule. 
There's nothing we can do about it. If we're going to make six bonds, we're going to exceed the octet rule. So that is the correct Lewis structure for sulfur hexafluoride. Okay. So again, keep in mind, if you're going to exceed the octet rule, make sure you exceed on the central atom. Okay. Moving right along. Lots of examples in this video, so lots of practice. Beryllium dihydride. Um, beryllium, group two, two valence electrons, two hydrogens, hydrogen in group one, one valence electron. Wow, this molecule only has four electrons. It's kind of going to be kind of hard to reach an octet, isn't it, with only four electrons? And so hydrogen can never be a central atom because hydrogen only has a 1s orbital, can only ever have two electrons, so it's always on the outside. Beryllium must go in the center. Single bonds, how many electrons have we placed? Yeah, four. Are we done? Yeah, this, this is the best that we can do. There's only four valence electrons and we've placed those four. So what we find is that in the gas phase, we do see that some beryllium and boron compounds end up to be electron, oops, let me write compounds, end up being electron deficient. Well, I wonder if you can hear my cat. I have a cat who wants to get into the, my office where I'm recording, and uh, he's not very happy being outside. So, oh well, uh, we'll keep going. I'm almost done. So, beryllium and boron, because they only have, beryllium only has two valence electrons and boron has three, it's kind of hard to get to an octet. Okay, it's kind of hard to get to an octet, particularly since beryllium and boron are pretty tiny atoms, so we can't pack too many atoms around them. So in the gas phase, these um, beryllium and boron compounds tend, tend to form some electron deficient compounds. Now what tends to happen is that they do polymerize and form um, solids and that these solids then do meet the, these po polymeric solids do meet the octet rule. But in the gas phase, these can be electron deficient. Okay, so what we see is sometimes we end up with more than eight. Um, on rare occasions, we end up with less than eight. Okay, so remember beryllium and boron are where we might see that. And I had one more down here. Oh, wow, that was interesting. Well, let's just write it because it somehow when I copied this over, it didn't copy quite, quite right. So the last one that I wanted to work, which I believe between the two videos, um, Oh, and beryllium disappeared too. So this was number seven. And number eight that I wanted to work was NO2, nitrogen dioxide. All right, so lots of practice between the two Lewis structure videos. So NO2, if we add up the valence electrons, we have five for nitrogen in group five or group 15, two oxygens, each at six because they're in group six, group 16, and we have 17 electrons. Do you know the problem already? Yeah, this molecule has an odd number of electrons. And what do we know about the Lewis model? Yeah, it's an electron pair model. So it's going to be hard to draw the best structure here. And so we'll do the best we can. So nitrogen, less electronegative in the center. Two oxygens. Start on the outside first. And that's 16. We have one more left. Okay. That's probably not the best structure that we can draw because nitrogen only has five. So we could take a lone pair from oxygen and make a double bond. Okay. Now you might want to put a double bond on the other side, which would give nitrogen nine. Okay, so if we take a pair from the other oxygen, make another double bond, and give nitrogen nine, um, that will not work in this case because nitrogen's only in the second row, and it cannot exceed the octet rule. It only has 
a 2s orbital and the three 2p orbitals. It can only hold eight electrons total. Okay, so this is probably about the best we can do. We can draw another structure where one of the oxygen has seven and nitrogen has eight, but either way, we're going to end up short of electrons. And you might be thinking, yes, we could draw another resonance structure here. I'm not going to do that here because we've talked about resonance enough. So you can see that if you end up with an, there, you know, there aren't that many molecules out there that have an odd number of electrons. Almost all of them have an even number of electrons. But what you see is that if you do have an odd number of electrons, the Lewis model isn't going to work very well. Now, as you might be thinking, if the nitrogen here is short of electrons, it really does want another electron. It wants an octet. So this molecule, NO2 gas, um, a component of uh, photochemical smog, it's kind of, if you live in a big city and you kind of see that brown haze off in the distance, could be dust, but um, nitrogen dioxide is a brown, you know, relatively nasty gas, um, and you will see that in photochemical smog. Okay, it's highly reactive, and it will react with itself. So we could think of, you know, one NO2 molecule and the other. So let's just do this. I'm not going to put all the lone pairs in, but say we have. Okay, so here's one molecule on the left. Okay, with its one electron on the nitrogen, one molecule on the right. Those two can form a bond there, a two-electron bond. That kind of looks odd. Let me redraw it again, where we'd have the nitrogen bonded to each other. And we could draw very different conformations of this with the double bonds on different sides. But that molecule we would form would be N2O4. Okay. by two of those NO2 units coming together, and you will notice that nitrogen now on both sides has an octet. Okay. So NO2, because of that sh uh, nitrogen with only seven electrons, tends to be quite reactive to complete its octet. All right, I think that's enough for Lewis structures. Two different videos, eight different examples. Um, covering molecules that meet the octet rule, some that exceed, some that are electron deficient, the concept of resonance. Um, and there will be more. We'll, talk, we'll even do some more Lewis structures when we're talking about formal charge. Formal charge is actually quite important in terms of trying to figure out which, if you can't decide which of a couple of different Lewis structures are better, we can assign what are called formal charges. We will do that in another video. Um, have a wonderful day. Take care.